Let's continue adding functionality from where we left off in the previous tutorial. Let's focus on student 2 and see how we can make it better. So I would want to actually be able to do a student 2 as well to this class. So I'll quickly add in a student 2 to this uh, stuff. So student 2 and here I would want to call this student 2 and this is to be student 2 so that I'll be able to add in two students to this class that's what I would want to be able to do so now I can actually go over to course instance and just create student 2 and let's be quick I can actually move this stuff out let's see and now student 2 sets Good. So student two and two. That's all. Let's see our test works. Uh, okay. The name of the method is the same, so it gives a compilation error. Let's go ahead and make this test edition of student two B3 course. So let's see if we are able to now add in student two also to the course. And let's run JUnit test. Okay, perfect. That works. Um, what is the important thing about JUnit is each time you run JUnits on this class, actually we are testing everything related to the class. So I'm also checking whether I've broken anything in the functionality of student one or anything in the creation of the course instance. So this gives me a real good backup test. And also if I press control O and see the outline of this class, it gives a functionality of this class. If I look at this test right now, it tells like it takes care of creation of the course instance and then you have a test for addition of student one and addition of student two. That's really good information to have. So you exactly understand what course instance does. This is basically what is called uh, the responsibility of a class. The responsibility of a class tells you exactly what the class is doing. And the best way to understand the responsibility of a class when you are doing test driven development or test course development is just look at the J units of that particular class. Now that you have a little bit of experience now adding uh, test one and test, now we have student one and student two created. Let's now shift our focus to creating a test to do, uh, I want, what I want to be able to do is to calculate the average mark in maths for that particular session. So I would want to create a student two and also I would want to create a student one. So what I'm doing is now test calculation of average. That's what I would want to do. So I would want to say the average math mark in this class is this. Since there are two students in this class, I would want to find out the average of those two. So let's now go ahead and do that. So student one is equal to new student of student one. Uh, I'll also set the marks. So student one dot set math marks as let's say 25. And okay, let's now do the same thing for student two. So student two dot set math marks. I would want to set it to let's say 27. It doesn't really matter, but I just want to make sure that uh, so now the student one and student two are set. So I would want to go ahead and test the average of the marks. So I would want to say uh, assert equals uh, 26. Okay, let's make it something which returns me back an average. So the average now is 25.5. So I would want 25.5 to be the average for this calculation. So I'd want to call course instance dot calculate math average. So 
that's exactly what we want. So we want to be able to calculate the math average and check that it's 25.5. Let's now write the method to be able to do that. So calculate math average, it's public. Uh, what does it return? Okay, this is an interesting thing. For the first time, we are going to use a new type called float. So average is something which is not an integer. So it's not 25, it's not 26, but it's 25.5. And Java offers a variable type called float and double. Float is, uh, the range of float is less than that of a double. But for our purposes, it would be sufficient to go ahead with float. Probably we should, uh, th there, are, like, there are problems with friction with float. But for now, let's just go ahead with float and try to do it. I would want to calculate the math average. Uh, for now, like, let's say, I just make it return 0, 0.0. For now, just to keep the compiler happy, and let's see. okay, uh, a default. Let's make this double. Okay, let's say the calculate math average method returns double back, and double is something which is used to store floating I mean, any decimal values, so 5.5, 6.0, something of that kind can be stored in double. I just, uh, for now, just to make the compiler happy, I've uh, created, uh, so let's just see what it says, is SL double is deprecated, uh, especially because uh, it's not precise. So what I'm going to do is add another parameter, which is actually going to give what is the precision I want to use in the comparison. I'm saying even if the value varies by 0 0.01, it's fine. Go ahead and do the comparison. So if I'm expecting 25.5 and the value which comes back is 25.491, that's fine. Especially because floating and double calculations are not precise, this value helps. So that's good. Now let's go ahead and try running this test. Obviously, the last test would fail because the value which we are returning from the method is 0, 0.0. So Genuine test, just the last one failed. So that's very good because all the other things are still succeeding. Uh, let's now go ahead and try implementing this method. So what's to do? Uh, the way the shortcut I've used is F3. F3 actually helps you to go to the method. So F3, uh, it takes me to the average. What I want to be able to do here is calculate the average of this uh, students, math marks. So, I would create a variable say math1 is equal to uh, I'm going to initialize it to a value that is student1 dot get math max that's basically this math1 I'm going to add in math2 student2 dot get math max uh, now let's go ahead and add average average should be a double variable obviously because it uh, can hold so average is nothing but math1 plus math2 two by 2 let's now return back the average so is that good so now I have math1 math2 and average is math1 plus math2 by 2 and I'm going to return average back so that's Good, I think. Let's now run the test and see what happens. Run as JMU test. Ah, there's a null pointer exception. We created the string to one, but we have actually not set the variable into the course instance. So let's now do that also. So that's why we had a null pointer exception. So I would set string one as string one. So now we have a string one here. And we are now let's run the test and see what happens. Okay, it fails. But what it is, is it's expecting 25.5, but the result was 25.0. Let's see why it could be 25.0. Um, when you look at this method, actually, uh, math1 uh, is equal to strand one dot get marks. Here, the calculation which is being done. The result of this is integer. Uh, what we have is uh, math1 plus math2, which is nothing but an int plus an int 
in java any result between two things of the same type would result in the value of that type so int plus int is a int double plus double is a double um, the similarly int by another int also leads you to having a double sorry int by another int would also give you an integer output so what we want here is actually a float calculation what happens if there is an int calculation is if there is a calculation of the type let's say 5 by 2 what happens is the 5 by 2 is 2.5 but when i do it as an int operation 5 by 2 results in 2 because it results in the truncation of the decimal point but we don't want the decimal point to be truncated so we have two options either we can make it a double operation by promoting the denominator to double so now what happens uh, is this is int plus int so this would result in an int that's not a problem so 5 plus 6 is 11 that's not a problem um, and then int by double actually double is considered to be a higher thing than a int so when you do a lower by higher or lower into higher or lower plus higher the type of the result would be higher so the type of this operation now becomes double so now the average would be calculated and returned back so let's see if this works okay great so it worked uh, there's another option that you can use here actually it's called a cast so instead of doing uh, 2.0 i can actually cast this particular thing uh, instead of we are using double everywhere so let's go ahead and be consistent and use double so now what happens is this value is casted to double so if i pass in 5 for mat 1 and 6 for mat 2 what happens here is 5 plus 6 11 11 is casted to double so that becomes 11.0 and then divided by 2 that gives you 5.5 so this is called casting so casting is a very important uh, thing in uh, java so this is how you cast a variable to some other type so i'm converting a int to a double by using a cast so let's now just try and test this and see if the result is as expected perfect okay that's really great um let's end our uh, tutorial here um, over the course of this tutorial, you have learned to create getters, setters, a method to calculate the average, um, probably the object-oriented programming, which we done in this tutorial is not the best kind of object-oriented programming. Let's see how to get it better in the next few tutorials. Okay. We are creating more videos as we speak. And if you want to stay updated, don't forget to click the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and feel free to share this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.